I welcome you to uh, take your Bibles and turn with me to Daniel chapter 7. And uh, in our blue Bibles, this is page 1384. 1384 in our blue Bibles. Daniel chapter 7. And <clears throat> I'll speak from the whole of verses 15 to 28. But to begin with, We'll just read uh, down to uh, verse 18. So Daniel chapter 7, and beginning to read at verse 15. <clears throat> I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the true meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. But the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Father God, we thank you for these words of yours. We thank you for these uh, words of revelation to uh, your servant uh, Daniel and uh, we marvel at uh, what you revealed him, to him about uh, human history even uh, Lord uh, so long ago uh, in ancient times and how even now that uh, that history has been fulfilled according to this revelation and uh, will surely be fulfilled as the rest of the prophecy uh, reveals. And so I pray, Lord, that as we, uh, Lord, recall these words, that uh, you will speak to us. Speak to us about what is to be come, so that we are rightly prepared as your true people, and uh, so that we will not be shaken in our faith when these things do happen, but we will be confident that they are happening according to your good purpose for us and for all your saints, and that you will bring us into our happy inheritance uh, in Christ Jesus. And so I pray you will speak this way to us this morning. And I ask in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> The Roman Empire began to form in the year 27 BC when the military might of Rome reached beyond the ancient city to take dominion over Europe, North Africa, and finally the whole Mediterranean world. The map shows there. The Roman legions and war machine are still not notorious for their irresistible force and brutality. Most infamously, Roman soldiers were the executioners of the Judean Christ Jesus and cruel crucifiers of our Savior. The Roman dominance of the world lasted until 476 AD when the once great city fell to the northern barbarians, the Europeans. <laughs> But the empire survived in the east with the new capital of Constantinople until that city fell to the Islamic Turks in 1453 and became Istanbul. Here in Daniel chapter 7, the man of God receives a revelation about a succession of four beastly kingdoms. The four of these dominions, the fourth of these dominions, will prove to be the Roman Empire. And from this fourth worldly power will come the last diabolical ruler we now call the Antichrist. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, verse 15 reads, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. 
The sights that have so troubled the godly Judean and esteemed counselor to the kings of Babylon are the images we read about in verses 1 to 14, just above. According to verse 1, Daniel has received this vision or revelation in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, whom we know from chapter 5 is fated to become the last Babylonian ruler of the great city and empire. Four great beasts coming up out of the sea have appeared to Daniel. First, a lion, second, a bear, third, a leopard, and then a fourth beast, which has been terrifying, powerful, and destructive. This fourth beast, beast has also had ten horns, and from among these ten has arisen another little but boastful horn. Then Daniel has seen the likeness of the Lord God, the immortal I Am, or the Ancient of Days, sitting on his exalted throne within the courtroom of heaven and surrounded by thousands upon thousands of angels. Finally, in the vision, uh, has appeared one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven, who has received from the almighty Ancient of Days an everlasting dominion over all peoples of the earth and a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Having seen this amazing revelation, Daniel recounts in verse 16 that I approached one of those standing there and asked him the true meaning of all this. What the images of the four beasts and the heavenly human-like being represent, Daniel does not understand. And so he asks one of the countless angels to explain. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. The angel begins to explain in verse 17. In chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar has dreamed of a great image with four different parts. And with heavenly insight, Daniel has revealed to him that the four parts are four successive kingdoms that will rule over the earth. Similarly, here in chapter 7 and the vision of Daniel, the four great beasts that arise from the earth signify four great kingdoms that will emerge from the nations and that will each prevail for a while over the world. But the saints of the Most High, the angel assures Daniel in verse 18, will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. In his chapter 2 dream, Nebuchadnezzar has seen a rock which has been cut without human hands, striking the towering image and destroy it. And Daniel has explained that the rock is the kingdom of God and that it will finally crush all other dominions and will itself endure forever. Likewise, in this chapter 7 revelation to Daniel, the appearance of the Ancient of Days and one like a Son of Man signify the coming judgment by the Almighty Ruler of the kingdoms of the earth and the establishment of His everlasting righteous rule over the world. Then His saints, or literally His holy ones, and those like Daniel and his fellow Judeans who have faithfully served the Lord their God and kept themselves pure according to his holy way, they will receive the eternal heavenly kingdom and will possess it forever. Then, Daniel recounts next in verse 19, I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast which was different from all the others and most terrifying with its iron teeth and bronze claws. 
The beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. This fourth beast has been so unlike any creature of the earth and so terribly destructive that the wise man is anxious to know for sure what it signifies. I also wanted to know, Daniel adds in verse 20, about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell the horn that looked more imposing than the others and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. It seems clear to the godly Israelite that this fearsome, beastly figure with the human-like, boastful horn is likely to be an adversary of the holy people of Yahweh God. And so Daniel also recounts in verse 21, as I watched... This horn was waging war against the saints and defeating them. Not only is the human-like horn boastful and proud in his worldly and ungodly ways, but he also persecutes and tries to destroy the saints, the holy ones, or the righteous people of the Almighty Lord God. Until... Verse 22 promises reassuringly, the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. So the vision ends well with the tri final triumph of the kingdom of God and the deliverance of the saints into their inheritance. But Daniel remains troubled about what the vision of the beasts means for the saints of Israel and holy people of God before his righteous kingdom finally arrives. So what the godly wise men desires to know, the angel of the Lord reveals to him. He gave me this explanation. Daniel recounts in verse 23, the fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. In chapter 2, in the prophetic dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, the iron legs of the great image have represented a fourth kingdom which will be strong as iron and will crush and break all other kingdoms. Now, in chapter 7, the angel confirms for Daniel that a fourth kingdom, more terrible and violent than the ones which, that have preceded it, will conquer the nations of the world and will rule over them powerfully and harshly. The ten horns are ten kings who came from this kingdom. The angel further explains in verse 24. The fourth kingdom will prevail for a long time and will continue with a succession of ten kings. After them, the angel reveals next about the boastful little horn, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. So this last king of the long-lasting fourth kingdom will subdue his rival kings and likely seize their territory. This proud and ambitious ruler will desire more authority and dominion than he has begun to reign with, and he will overthrow other kings and kingdoms so he can achieve the widespread rule he greedily covets. But worst of all, in verse 25, this usurping ruler will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints and try to change the set times and the laws. The set times are most likely the Sabbaths and other sacred occasions of the Israelite calendar. And the laws are the commandments the Lord God has given his people through Moses. 
the boastful and blasphemous king will try to coerce the Israelite people into abandoning their worship of the true living God and compel them to forsake the way of holiness and lines of godliness he has ordained for them. The saints will be handed over to him for a time, times, and half a time. This is another way of saying for a limited time, shortened or abbreviated time. Since the word time is indefinite in length, but a time, times, and half a time, or in other words, three and a half times, is a limited period, and only half of a complete seven times, seven days, or seven years. To spare his beloved saints, then, the Lord God will abbreviate, shorten, or limit the time of their oppression and persecution by the wicked and blasphemous king. The time of trouble for the holy ones will come to an end because the Lord Almighty will pronounce judgment on the blasphemous ruler and persecutor of the saints, as we read in verse 26 about what the angel finally reveals to Daniel. But the court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. The almighty ancient of days, whom Daniel has earlier seen, take his seat of highest authority in the courtroom of heaven. This Lord High Judge will finally pronounce judgment on the wicked king strip him of his worldly power, and put an end to him forever. Then, verse 27 gloriously declares, the sovereignty, power, and greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be handed over to the saints, the people of the Most High, the holy ones of Israel, and all those who faithfully serve the true and ever-living I Am, they will inherit all the rule and dominion that have formerly belonged to the ungodly kingdoms of the world. His kingdom, the angel finally foretells in verse 27 about the reign of the Lord God and his saints, will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. The last kingdom of this earth will be the everlasting kingdom of God and all his holy people. <clears throat> the everlasting kingdom of God. The rule of the heavenly I am and his faithful servants over the earth forever. But before that glorious dominion finally comes, the fourth beast, or last worldly kingdom, will prevail. And the blasphemous and wicked ruler must arise. Our Almighty Father God is watching over history to ensure the outcome he has lovingly ordained for this world. And in his boundless wisdom, he has decreed that there should be a succession of earthly kingdoms. From the book of Daniel and the beastly kingdoms it names, we understand that three of these dominions have already risen and fallen and have long ago fulfilled their passing roles in the sovereign plan of the Almighty. The lion of the revelation is the once mighty Babylon and the powerful kingdom founded by Nebuchadnezzar. The bear is Persia which overthrew Babylon under the leadership of Cyrus and held dominion over the ancient Near East for more than 200 years. And the leopard is the empire of Greece, 
which was famously founded by Alexander the Great and prevailed over the ancient world for nearly 300 years. These successive kingdoms rose to power and far-reaching rule and then fell to defeat and subjection in fulfillment of the revelation to Daniel and in completion of the will of the almighty ruler of heaven and earth, just as Daniel foretold. But what about the fourth kingdom and the fourth beast that so terrified the prophet Daniel with its iron teeth and bronze claws? The beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. From ancient history and from the New Testament scriptures, we understand that the revelation about a fourth beast and the fourth conquering kingdom has been fulfilled by the city of Rome and the empire that has reached forcefully around the Mediterranean world. The book of Revelation in chapter 13 recalls the prophecy of Daniel 7 about beastly kingdoms and speaks about the Roman Empire that holds power over the Mediterranean world during the first century New Testament era as the reincarnation of the ancient beast or the terrible fourth kingdom Daniel has foreseen. And that image you see up there, it comes from the book of Revelation and uh, this account of that beast. And the dragon, we read in Revelation, or Satan, we understand from earlier verses, stood on the shore of the sea. And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, as it says in Daniel, but had feet like those of a bear, also in Daniel, and a mouth like that of a lion, in Daniel. The dragon, or again Satan, gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. And so we learn from Revelation that the arch enemy Satan is the inspiration or incitement for the beastly kingdoms. And that the last embodiment of ungodly world dominion has been the Roman Empire. But even though ancient Rome has risen and fallen, the worldly beast still lives. And the Daniel 7 revelation still awaits fulfillment. Because upon the fourth beast, the prophet envisioned ten horns and another little horn, human-like and speaking boastfully. And when Daniel asked about the meaning of these horns, the angel of the Lord God explained to him, the ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. From the revelation to Daniel, we understand that from the fourth beastly kingdom would come ten kings, or a long succession of worldly rulers. And from the history of the Roman Empire, we know there was a long line of emperors. We also know the Roman dominion continued for a millennium. With the move of the capital to Constantinople in the east and the transformation of the empire into the Christian Byzantine rule. So, the fourth beast has continued to live. The fourth kingdom has persisted in world history. And even now, it abides in the form of new republics and former territories throughout Western and Eastern Europe, and even as far as North America, where the Europeans have migrated. 
not very flattering for us as a, us European folk. And from the old Roman Empire and the body of the prophetic fourth beast, we expect the boastful horn and the last worldly king to arise as the angel revealed to Daniel about the wicked ruler. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints and try to change the set times and the laws. The saints will be handed over to him for a time, times, and half a time. Here is the original biblical prophecy about the one whom Christians have long called the Antichrist. Christ Jesus himself has warned his followers about false Christs who will perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect. And Revelation chapter 13 foresees the last false Christ or the Antichrist in terms from Daniel chapter 7. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints, just as Daniel has foretold, and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. The Antichrist, we understand from Revelation and from Daniel, will make war against the saints. He will oppress and persecute the holy ones of the immortal I am and those who have become righteous through their obedience to the Lord and Savior Jesus. The Antichrist will claim worship for himself. He will deny God the Father the honor and reverence due to him. And the false Christ will even slander and blaspheme the Almighty. Happily, however, this time of godless government and tribulation of the saints will only last for a shortened or abbreviated time, for 42 months, for three and a half years, for a year, two years, and half a year, or as Daniel has foretold, a time, times, and half a time. And then the end will come for the Antichrist, for the fourth beastly kingdom, and for all the ungodly kingdoms of this world, as the angel of the Lord has foretold in Daniel 7. But the court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. The court of the heavenly and almighty judge of all will sit and pronounce judgment on the blasphemer of God and persecutor of the saints. The wicked and devilish ruler will be stripped of all his power, his authority, and his dominion over the earth. And the Antichrist will be destroyed forever in the fiery lake of burning sulfur, according to Revelation 19.20. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be handed over to the saints, the people of the Most High God. The whole world and rule over it will become yours and mine. The glorious inheritance of the saints and holy immortals who have arisen from the dead along with the resurrection and life, Christ Jesus. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. In the everlasting kingdom of Christ, and alongside the exalted Lord Jesus, you and I, and all the saints, will reign forever. 
Praise the Lord. Sadly, within the state of Israel, the day of judgment has come for the terrorists called Hamas. Two weeks ago, on the Jewish Sabbath and Torah celebration day, Hamas militants invaded Israeli settlements near the Palestinian Gaza Strip and massacred hundreds of men, women, and children and took hostage nearly 200 others back into the Gaza territory. This is the worst attack and gravest tragedy to afflict the Jewish nation since the Holocaust of World War II. And Jews of Israel and all the countries where they live are shocked and bitterly grieved. Most of the civilized world, and especially Christians, who love and care for Israel, as I do, are horrified by the reports, videos, and images that document the violence and inhumanity of the attack. But the nation of Israel will not let the atrocity go unanswered, and the crimes of Hamas go unpunished. The Israeli government has declared war on the terrorist militia. The Air Force has been bombarding Hamas fortresses and hiding places already, and Israeli tanks and troops are ready to begin a ground incursion into Gaza. The mission of the Israel Defense Forces will be to find and rescue the hostages who may still be alive, but also to crush Hamas to eliminate the terrorists and to prevent them from ever harming Israeli Jews again. This day of reckoning and retribution for the terrorist and murderous Hamas is like the day of judgment the Lord Jesus will surely bring for the blasphemous Antichrist and for all who have given themselves to his unholy service. But for you and I, and all the saints, who have kept ourselves faithful to the true Christ Jesus, that last day for all worldly government will be the first day of our everlasting salvation and our reign with the immortal I Am over the heavenly kingdom of God come to earth. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you again for uh, your revelation, the revelation of uh, human history to uh, your servant Daniel. And we do marvel, Father God, at uh, what uh, he saw so many hundreds of years before these things unfolded and happened in uh, history. And uh, we thank you that uh, you have uh, shared this warning with the people of God about uh, the ungodliness that would come and the, uh, the worldly kingdoms that would arise, but also that uh, you uh, gave us assurance and a hope uh, that uh, despite uh, whatever comes, uh, Lord, uh, in, from uh, this world, uh, you are in control and uh, you will ensure the outcome and uh, you will ensure the salvation of those who belong to you by faith and uh, by our trust in Christ Jesus for salvation and a resurrection with him. And so, Father, I thank you for this wonderful hope, this wonderful assurance that we have from the Scriptures and uh, in Christ Jesus, our Savior. And Father God, I pray that uh, we will, uh, Lord, uh, look today on the things that are happening, the trouble in Israel, uh, the trouble in uh, Ukraine, and uh, the trouble around the world, Lord, wherever it might be happening 
uh, from uh, the, uh, the perspective and from the standpoint of Daniel and uh, your word and your assurance about the final outcome and the salvation of those who belong to you by faith. And so I pray that you will keep us and preserve us by uh, your grace and by the Holy Spirit working within us so that uh, we uh, indeed are your saints, your holy ones, and who uh, follow the righteous way of our Savior Jesus and live in obedience to him. Please uh, work in us that work of grace so that we can be confident of uh, your goodwill for our lives and uh, for the outcome that leads to eternal life. And so I pray uh, that you will do this work within us and uh, may we uh, continue in your love and goodwill for our lives. And so I pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Our God reigns, and he will work everything out well for those of us who belong to him in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go with that hope and that assurance, and have a good week.